bringing you the absolute best stories across the ag industry. You're now tuning into How I Built This Ag Business, an original series by AgSwag. Hey everybody, welcome to another okay. episode of uh, How I Built This Ag Business. Today we got Scott Foot on here. We'll uh, have Brad join us shortly and Greg might be on as well. But uh, all three of them are with Foot Cattle Company. The business started in 1985, and they are now one of the largest cattle feeders in the United States as they own Hoxie Feed Yard, Imperial Beef, Lane County Feeders, Decatur Family Beef, and Pioneer Feed Yard. They also farm, manage a bank, and have a wide variety of, of investments. And uh, with that, I'd like to welcome Scott to the show. Hey, thanks, Jordan. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks for inviting us. Yeah, heck yeah. Yeah, thanks yeah. for being on. Yeah, it's good. I enjoyed getting to know you guys. Yeah, for sure. So your brother's going to be jumping on potentially. In a yeah, bit. Brad is, again, uh, as in real life all the time, right? There's always something going on. So Brad's, uh, we have a little company conference call we do every week. Uh, and it would have been yesterday. Yesterday is Labor Day. So it's today, this afternoon, 3 o'clock. So Brad's jumping on that for a minute to talk to the crew a little bit. And uh, Greg, he... Uh, he takes care of buying uh, the Peter cattle. And so he's busy tackling a little bit of that right now. So he, he might try to jump on here and here after a bit. Cool. So uh, how, how'd this whole thing get started? Your, your dad, Bob started it back in the eighties. Yep. Yep. Uh, home is Bucyrus, Kansas, right there, South of uh, the Kansas city area on the Kansas side. And um, yeah, dad farmed over there with his dad and brother and, and uh, had a great, uh, you know, operation. And it, uh, mm -hmm. at one point, as I guess, you know, a lot of brothers do in, in farming, they decided, one decided he, he wanted to go kind of farm and our dad decided he would kind of uh, do the cattle thing. So uh, that was in 1985 and that was when Foot Cattle Company uh, began. Cool. And, so, uh, you know, uh, yeah. So that's still home, home over there. And, uh, so what'd you, what'd you guys start with? How many cattle did you guys start with? What'd you start up as? Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, you know, dad would have some really good stories. We lost dad a couple of years ago here, but he would have some great stories about starting up, but uh, started up with a couple quarters of land and uh, a lot of work ethic, I guess, is what he would, he would say. And um, really he got his start as an order buyer. So dad would buy cattle for a lot of people up in kind of East Nebraska, East side of Nebraska, down in Southwest Kansas, up in Iowa, he bought for some people. And so really got his start. Uh, he would tell you with the Kansas City Star and uh, and a uh, gooseneck trailer uh, is that he uh, uh, would uh, look for Sundays uh, after church, grab the uh, newspaper and uh, call people and try to trade trade some old cows and things like that. This is how he made a living to really keep us fed as, as little kids. Um, and then Sort of learn the cattle business through that, through just trading and uh, in the real world. Uh, I'll tell you what, he uh, became good at it. And so as he really got to going, he, he got to recognizing good deals of feeder cattle and uh, found the people that were looking to buy and, and was able to uh, make a good living as an order buyer. That's really how he got his start in the cattle business. Is just with with understanding the animals and understanding trading, understanding making a deal. That's really what was his uh, big starting business. Brad's just rolling in here too, so we'll let him pitch in. But they were asking about starting, and I talked about yeah. that. You know, uh, this is you guys met Brad here earlier, um, yeah. and I told him uh, a little bit about that. So just trading cattle. I mean, he knew how to. Go. He learned how to uh, go find a good value in a steer or in an old cow yeah. or whatever it was, and and sell it to somebody. Well, back back in the day, and I'm just, maybe Scott's already said this story. He, I remember getting the Kansas City Star uh, and going through yeah. the classifieds. And fighting, you already talking about this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we spent a lot of time just running around as kids. Really. Uh, riding with dad, and he do that, or I don't. We've been to a zillion sale barns yeah. uh, where dad was buying cattle for other people, and He'd buy a set of cattle and then he'd hop on, you know, they have a cell phone. So you'd go find the pay phone, <laughs> you'd hop on, 
talk to people and just trying to pedal that set of cattle. Mm-hmm. Right. So uh, yeah. it was hard work. It was. It was a lot time a lot of energy a lot of hours away from home and uh but uh, uh that's how he got started how he built the business from nothing just just with his mind so you get yeah. so it started uh you guys started as kids at a young age and... yeah we just yeah. started jumped in and uh helped right uh, as he got going we are there uh around home and sort of built on some pins to that and it it wasn't fancy construction, right? A little bit of woven wire fence and uh, um, a lot of a lot of muck and mud through some of those pins in the winter time. But we had a gate that swung. It was uh, it, yeah. It, we, we, we cherished it. Yeah, those were the gates that you had to pick around instead of the ones that swung on the hinge. So yeah, they did a lot of that growing up Love and uh, stuff that our kids didn't get to experience as much, Bradley. Uh, right. it, but uh, <laughs> it it. Um, yeah, it, we we grew it up together. I guess to be flat honest with you, and and uh, it's been a, been a fun ride ever since. So, uh, Hoxie, Hoxie was the first feedlot you guys got into, right? Okay, yeah. Yep. And what what kind uh, of drove so, that, what kind of drove that decision? You know, so I guess the story continues. Dad uh, was buying. Like, I'll kind of keep go back a little bit further, and Dad was buying cattle. And one one of the sale barns that he hit every week was Kansas City Stockyards. So he was in there every week buying cattle. And Brad and I went down there a lot as kids. And anyway, went in there one time and friends with a guy named Wayne Tilly, who was from over east Kansas City there, 45 miles, yeah, roughly. Um, and uh, they'd be friends and Wayne was buying cattle for himself uh, is why he was buying cattle, like Brad said, and then uh, trying to sell them to somebody. Well, dad bought a set of cattle I ended up with, and I, you'd sit, fix this story where I mess it up, Brad, but generally Wayne and dad were sitting there and Wayne said, what are you going to do with those, Bob? He said, well, I'm going to go try to sell them. And he said, why don't we just feed them? Yep. And, uh, I, mean, I don't know, probably Crawford. I really don't know. Yeah, I don't think it was Crawford at that time. Well, maybe it was up there in West Point somewhere. I think it was up in West Point. And sent him up to feed him. Uh, and so he said, okay, well, and, and Wayne had the money uh, to to pay for him and, and put him on feed. And they put him on feed. And at that point, they started feeding cattle together. And um, they uh, started feeding cattle together from there forward uh, up until the day Wayne died, which was in 2000. And now I have to back back up. I, I jumped too far ahead in the story there. They, they started feeding cattle at several feedlots up in Nebraska and in Southwest Kansas. And hell, there'd be some of those little yards, they'd just fill them clear up. You know, some of those two, 3,000 head little, little custom yards up there, they'd just have all the cattle in them sometimes. Anyway, they started feeding enough cattle together. This is probably 1995, 1996 or so. Probably 90. Yeah, 95. I was a, I would have been a sophomore, junior at K-State. And uh, they said, we just, we need to have our own feedlot. Many of us were feeding. We, maybe we ought to have our own feedlot. But yeah, we probably should. So where do we want to be? Well, you know. We kind of want to, we like the corn price up in Nebraska. We like the weather down in Kansas. So we want to be kind of Northwest Kansas or Southwest Nebraska, somewhere in there. And uh, journal, I'm sure you guys know the High Plains Journal, picked that thing up and probably took a year or so before we ever found the right place and ended up bidding on one place, sort of verbally bought another place didn't end up happening, uh, sort of by accident, ended up in Hoxie, Kansas. So uh, came out here December 26th of 97. We met, uh, like I said, we lived there South Kansas City. Wayne lived over the east side of town. And to the Golden Ox there by the Kansas City Stockyards parked there and uh, jumped in Mom Suburban. Mm-hmm. And headed west, stayed the night in Hayes. It was about one of the coldest nights of my life. It, uh, like I say, this 
Christmas night. We left we left Kansas City Christmas night, headed to Hayes and stayed there in Hayes at that motel on the south side of the interstate, which is still there. The thing is <laughs> they need to push that thing in. But anyway, uh stayed there that night and then came to Hoxie the next morning, the morning of the 26th, and drove around out here with the real estate guy and two or three of the old owners of the feedlot here and and uh all that night, we had a contract signed and bought the feedlot. Uh, that so then um, closed on it April first of ninety eight. I graduated there in December of ninety eight and moved out here December twenty sixth of uh, you graduated December of ninety seven. Sure, but ninety eight. December, no, December 26, 97 is when we bought the P-Lot. You we closed you, April 1st, 98. Well, you, I moved here December of 98. No, because that would have been... Oh, you're year. right. You're right. I moved here December of 97. Not that, yeah. not that it mattered. Well, that's true. I was one year ahead on that whole story. Yeah, yeah. because... Uh, I think we bought the art December 26th of 96. You, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Know. You're right. And then we closed April 1st of 97. Right. I moved here December 26, 97. Yeah. You're so right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Because then I got engaged November 14th, 98, the day K-State beat Nebraska. I hope you don't have any Nebraska listeners on here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> I don't remember it for the I don't remember the date for my engagement as much as for the uh for the football game. <laughs> yeah. That was good. So you came uh, back. so wow, I'm just kind of the story here. But, yeah, so you you kind of yeah, came back. I guess let me let me let me kind of let me go let me wrap up the story a little bit more. And then uh you know, so we were here and uh I got married in January of 2000. And then uh, Michelle moved out. And then one month later, uh, yeah, I've got a phone call early in the morning. And, and Wayne, his partner, died of just died of a heart attack there. So it was uh, uh, it was a you know tough day in our business. And as the story continues on forward, Brad ends up marrying Wayne's daughter uh, a few years later. So oh, wow. yeah. the we're Bye. still partnering. Yep. Wow. Yeah, that's an interesting yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. So Hox, Hoxie was what, 16,000 head? Yeah, when we bought it, it was probably like, uh, you know, sort of a 10,000 head yard. And and then uh, we built on it right away and got it to about 28,000. And then a few more times since then. And I think it's right at 60,000 head here now. Okay. Perfect. What did you guys run total? So. I mean, there's 285,000 in per full right in there. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. So, so you yeah. came back from K State. You were like, that was right when you bought the feedlot. And then were you still at K State, Brad? Yeah, I was a year behind Scott in school, but Scott was an overachiever and graduated <laughs> in three and a half years. And I went the full four years. So yeah. I graduated. So Scott graduated December of 97. I graduated spring of 99. Uh, so and then after I graduated, I moved back home to camp and uh, 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 tried to, you know, we, we had a background yard. We ran a number of cattle through that thing, that, that same yard we were talking about that barely had a gate that swung. So we would grow the cattle there, bring them out west here, and scout would finish them off. So we grow there, and then we grow crop farmers there in uh, just south of Kansas City and Bucyrus. And then, um, uh, and the summer of uh was it oh two scott we got a chance to buy our ranch manhattan yep. that's right and uh uh bought that ranch then i spent a fair amount of time there at our ranch in manhattan uh, plus be sorry it's about 115 mile 120 mile drive into uh spent a lot of time at both places got married uh in, in uh if you watch this i'm gonna get in trouble yeah november 5th of 05 and then and then we bought. We lost our sister in 04. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, we better mention that. Yeah. And, and after we lost our sister, that's after right. that is when Brad started dating Lindsay. Right, which would be Wayne, dad's partner's daughter. Anyways, so yeah, that's correct. So lost our sister. She was two years younger than me, or three years younger than me. Mm -hmm. So 
anyways, and that was a bad deal. That, that was no fun. But um, anyways, but it did uh, bring us together uh, uh, to Lisa and Foots again. So that, that, yeah. was, that was the bright part of all of that. But yeah. um, so then in uh, five, and then December 2606, we seem to have a theme of moving the day after Christmas. Yeah. Um, uh, we, uh, uh, I moved to Imperial, Nebraska. So, uh, and I've been there ever since. So it'll be 17 years this Christmas. Yep. So, yeah. so, and then we've just grown the business from there. Yeah. Imperial beef was the second feedlot you guys bought. Yep. That's right. Yes. Cool. Yep. You were running Hoxie and then Brad went to run Imperial. Yep. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Cool. Where, where's Greg fit in? Well, he was behind. He was not even out of high school at that yeah. point. Greg's ten years younger. Yeah, than yeah. So 11. he might have been. Let's see. When would he have graduated high school? Why like Greg? Probably oh, he would five. not. Yeah, oh five. So yeah, he so he was in college. But he'd been a freshman in college when Brad moved to Imperial. Yeah. Okay. And so then uh, Greg graduated a few years later. In the meantime, we bought Lane County feeders right in there. Probably about oh. I don't think twenty ten. We bought Lane County five years, six years after Imperial. No, not even six, four. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's right. Okay. Somewhere in there. Right in there. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, Greg moved home and started working with dad and learning buying feeder cattle. Yeah. So that's what Greg still does to this day is more or less what dad's job was buying feeder cattle. Right. That's exactly right. So, now, was there ever any, did you guys ever, Waver that you might not want to be in the farm business, or did you guys always know when you were kids and growing up this is what you're gonna do? We still haven't decided. We're we're just still this sort of happened, you know. I mean it, it, uh her dad threw me on. We had dad had a cab over KW in 1887. Mm -hmm. He threw me on a pod and said, Go up there and spend a few days with Dean. Oh yeah. And so threw me on the track with Curly. Yeah. And went up there. And that was the first time I've ever been in the state of Nebraska, let alone a feed yard bigger than our little four pinner back home. And uh I just remember seeing and you could turn a truck around in it. It like blew my mind. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and anyways uh I knew that I wanted to live in Nebraska at some point in my life. Back yeah, then. Cool. Yeah. Sure. So yeah. when did uh when did uh is is what's your biggest feed yard? Is it Oxy? You know, uh so we we bought Lane County and then and then ended up at Oakley at, at Pioneer, and that's a that was a story getting that thing bought too, and then and then bought the one in Oberlin. So we're all kind of we're all pretty tight here. I mean Lane County is as far south as we go, Imperial's as far north as we go. So, you know probably 200 miles if you go all the way north to south but you know from where we're sitting right now 60 miles south of us is lane county and it'd be our biggest you know 70 000 head down there uh, and a pine at oakley be 45 miles southwest of here and it's about 50 000 50 two three thousand head where hoxie here is like 60 000 head and straight north of us 30 miles is decatur beef and it's uh, about 45,000 head yard. And Brad's up at Imperial is about a 60,000 head yard, 130 miles northwest of right here where we sit. Where are you guys doing all of your row cropping? Just around the feed yards and eastern Kansas. So we have some around eastern Kansas. But generally, we bought land around the feed yards to try to um, improve the feed yard operations. Is really the, sure. from our point of view of the farm, is to supplement the feedlot. Truthfully, I say that properly. Yeah. Don't you think, Brad? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, feed source and to, to add flexibility to to be able to buy. Uh, you know, if a lot of farmers are wanting to sell a silage, we'll pick our corn. If a lot of farmers are wanting to pick corn, we'll chop ours for silage. As an example, that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Yeah. Kind of ties in, you know, some of our manure program and whatnot too. We sure. Yeah, we utilize the manure. It, it works pretty hand at row crop farming production that they were together yeah yeah for sure jordan um yeah so how did one question i had is uh 
So how did you guys get into this uh, bank? You guys involved in a bank or? Yeah. You know, that, that was another sort of a side story, I guess, down the road. It, it uh, uh, you know, when the first day we bought Poxy, um, well, I guess December 26, 96, that night, got the contract signed here, uh, which I told you that story already. And the real estate guy said, hey, uh, you know, you might want to meet the next door neighbor here, the banker from in town. Uh, he's got a 320 sits right here by the feed yard. You probably want to buy that deal. If you're planning on building some pens, it fit in real good. So like, okay, let's go meet him. So we just drove over there and met him pretty soon. Dad and Wayne and Heaven made a deal to buy that 320 where he lived. And, and uh, fast forward uh, 25 years, 26 years or so. Uh, well, probably 25 years, I guess. We we uh, ended up buying his bank, so uh, <laughs> it, it just worked out. He was ready for retirement, and we uh, um, it fit us really good from a um, physical location point of view. You know, it fit. Uh, it was in Northwest Kansas, around where the feed yards are, and and also in Manhattan, which is a town real special to us from K State point of view. And we have a ranch there, and we really love Manhattan. And we bought a branch over in Overland Park now too, so that you know it's right around home. And and so we, anyway, we we love where the bank sits. We know the area. We know the people. So that's a a new new opportunity for us. What's what's the name of the bank in Overland Park? Uh, it's called Outdoor Bank. Is the name of the bank. We just rebranded oh, yeah. here a few months ago. Brad, Brad's hat is the logo. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Outdoor <laughs> Bank. Yep. Yeah. You can read uh, that or not. So it's, uh, yeah, we, we went through a lot of changes at the bank, trying to, it's our own, um, and trying to think a little bit uniquely about it. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's the, that's, that's the challenge we're, we're tackling right now. Are there, uh, some similarities I'm assuming between the businesses and business problems and <clears throat> the same no, they, 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 they're, 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 they're pretty different. We understood banking very, very well from a borrowing money point of view. Uh, <laughs> the lending point of money point of view is much different. So <laughs> we're we're still in education phase, but yeah, great people. Uh, great people work with us. Um, we just lost one of our great people a couple of weeks ago. He is sort of a dang surprise heart attack and lost one of our main main guys but uh i'm going to tell you we we built a really great team of great people and uh enjoy working with them so yeah it's good at the feed yards and at the banks i mean it's really all about people right i mean you guys see that every day and what you do every... we just have some great people we work with how do you guys have you got any tricks or hacks to hiring good folks out there at the farm or Hiring good people in t in town. What do you, you know? We, we struggle. I mean, we struggle. I'll be honest with you. Time. I get. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I guess they have to. They have to believe in what you're doing. I think. Right. Yeah. They have to believe in your company and believe in people. And uh, you know, I used to kind of grab butt in here anytime. But I mean, I used to sort of make fun of culture as a word you know people would use it and it sounds kind of corporate -y, right and all that but i will tell you each time that we've like bought one of these feed yards or this bank the culture that's there is is real you know and whether it's a good one or a bad one it's real and hard to change every single time every single time that's what I was just talking this morning we've been talking this weekend as has the entire country about coach prime out of Colorado and, you know, I've been used to, we buy something and we work with the culture that's there and try to mold it our way or whatever. And then that's worked great, but it's, it's, it's work to try to merge cultures together and such. I, in my opinion, coach prime, he just goes in and gets rid of everybody and starts clear over with starts over on day one with his culture. <laughs> it, it was bold and and uh, kind of exciting, frankly. I did it. You, you know, we always like to grow from within. Like if we yeah. have an opportunity uh, for a manager position in one of our feed yards, we'd like to find somebody there. 
Yeah. You know, they've bought into what we've been doing. They bought into the community. Their kids are established. Yeah. If you can promote within, I think it really helps the culture. Um, so we try to focus on that. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and when we do that, I think it really helps us. I don't know. It, it, we have, we don't have a lot of turnover and, okay. and I can do a lot of that to having a good culture. Yeah. We um, let our people do their work. Uh, and we take pride in our guys. You know, mm-hmm. we have great benefits and whatnot. And we just try to do our very best to take care of people because they take care of us in the end. Right. And mm-hmm. we got all these four legged critters we got to take care of and we got to do what's best for them in the end. Yeah. So, and having a, stable quality workforce is a lot of that you know another thing i think that's helped our people and what we're really focusing on is uh facilities and just continuing to invest in our right. own facilities because people i think see that and appreciate that when they know you're willing to fix up that fence or fix up that bunk line or you know people understand that and appreciate that and see that you're willing to, it's almost like investing right in them. I feel like. Yeah. Uh, I'm with you. I'm I'm torn on the acquisition side of things. I've had, you know, like Musk into Twitter and just shit and like half the staff. Yeah. Yeah. And I've got several great investors that, you know, I traded with in New York and Chicago that when they did big takeover deals, how they went in and, I mean, I've one guy chopped me, got rid of 10 buildings and 10 staffs and went down to one within one week. And, you know, I, I mean, just, just started from scratch, basically, like you said, Dion did. I, I don't know which way's right. I've I don't either. been part of both and I, I don't know. I mean, every, both ways seem to just be a crazy headache. So I, I don't know what to tell people on that front. I, yeah. You know, well, I love the best place. I got a lot of trust in each other and changing culture is difficult. I, I believe that people, <clears throat> people will change if you show them something right. good, what they're changing towards. Um, but it's not easy, yeah. Yeah. but change almost always turns out to be a good thing. I would agree. Change almost every time we've had right. change, even if you were afraid of it and didn't really want to do it, it's almost always good. Totally agree with that. Yeah, I would agree with one. So, so were most of the feedback yeah. you guys bought, were they like going downhill when you bought them or did you kind of approach them like, hey, I'm trying to buy this or? I wouldn't necessarily say yeah, that. I wouldn't say that. No, they 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 were they were all good. Um, <laughs> we bought a feed yard that was just a bad. The worst one was probably hot. Yeah. yeah hot In terms of just being sure. the, the most TLC. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, we bought quality facilities to start with. Because, like, just going back to that culture thing, it, we just felt like it's simpler to hire someone if you had something to work with. If you could bring somebody in and say, "Oh wow, well, I'm going to enjoy working here. They have quality equipment, they have good facilities, you know, a great mm-hmm. good break room, you know, the the, the, the little things." Yeah, yeah. That, in our opinion, that pays off. So, so when, sure. when you would look at a place, would you? think that you guys could bring your people in and improve it or your system or your process or what kind of uh ip i guess intellectual property do you guys have that thought not really any. Nothing. not 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 really any just just hard work i mean they they i think a lot of times our thought process was it i mean sometimes you might have to hire somebody but generally we tried we <clears throat> we tried to hire everybody that was there you know the guy who we bought it from usually was the owner and they were retiring so whenever we would buy it try to work with whoever was his next level and and promote them and say hey you know and also try to take away some of the high level management stuff from them and do it sort of ourselves uh high level decision making for example but as far as really getting the work done and 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 making good decisions on the fly at the locations we just try to have good people at our at our feed yards and there we have some like I say, fantastic people at all of our, all of our feed yards. Jordan and I have a couple of friends that one of the guys, he, he rolls up a uh, medium to large size businesses. Uh, like right now he's in the process of rolling up a bunch of crane companies, uh, big crane companies. And he's yeah. bought about eight to 10 so far and he'll roll them up. Probably gets about 12 to 15. Then, you know, he sells them to private equity and we're still sure. the same. We got another guy that does it in the HVAC business. And so it's interesting to, 
you know, what's your guys' long-term goal? Are you going to keep acquiring feedlots or are you going to stay in your? Oh, we're, we're just going to keep going. I, I don't know what that means. Yeah. I, but I mean, we, right, yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. I, I don't know what's next, but, uh, <laughs> but something is, I guess I will say that. We That's have that like mid- us. That's like us. Yeah. We yeah. Don't know. yeah. Try to keep our eyes open and listen and pay attention and, and uh, invest in ourselves. A lot of, a yeah. lot of acquiring new stuff, feed yards is some of it's invest in ourselves. Mm-hmm. We invest in our mills, our equipment, and yep. whatnot. So, um, in a lot of ways, that's uh, you know, that's how we're yard. growing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we might build some pens every now and again. So, um, but yeah, it takes a lot of money. I mean, just the value of cattle has, has increased so much lately, and and uh, the equipment and and like Brad said, new feed mills and such. I mean, it takes quite a bit of reinvestment right back into our own places that 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 uh that's been a big focus for us and i think a valuable one you think there'll be a, f- a shakeout in some of these feed lots with interest rates going up or increasing or what are you thinking so, i don't know it appears to me as though there's has to be some shake up somewhere i don't know about in feed lots but i'm just saying in the economy in general i i'd be interested to see how we can just go through with inflation and and then throwing all this um interest rate on top of it uh to to operate so i've I've been really it's it's remarkable how strong of a system capitalism is in my opinion how we've just been able to keep our country rolling forward and economically seem like getting better all the time from a general economic point of view you know keep growing the economy it's it's a surprise to me so i'll I'll be interested to see again i I think the challenge for feedlots will be lack of supply of feeder cattle you know i mean staring us in the face so uh uh see how we navigate through that the next few years yeah i agree yeah yeah tell me uh i read i found a few uh things online about your family tell me about the story with your dad buying the last kettle uh cattle ever traded at the stockyards oh okay st joe go for it brother uh you know i don't know if there's a lot to it dad loves st joe uh and a great here he would he'd probably go to tears talking about yeah he loves he'd have a story about it yep um and i remember dad when he was I mean, they were, that was a big stockyard when it was rolling. And I think he spent a whole year up there before he bought anything, just like studying and learning and understanding. And um, anyways, we bought, a, I don't know how many cattle out there through the years. I bet close to a million. Oh, I, bet so. I mean, it was a lot. Yeah. And uh, um, anyways, just that last set we went through there and, and uh, uh, it was a long time name and I can't remember what the name was. You probably have it there in that article, but uh, set of eight fifty nine weight steers, and I I think uh, come hell or high water, I, I, I do know at the end that Greg had Dad on the phone. His his lungs weren't very good at the time. He just couldn't travel like he used to, and yeah. And uh, at the end, Greg goes, "You're going to give me a dime one last time, giving you a dime. You know, just trying to slow that auctioneer down. So we're 198 and a quarter, 198, 198, 198 and a half, 178, 75, 85. I'll do a dime. So we finally got a dime on him. And I think that's where he got him bought right there. But, uh, yeah. uh, but anyways, yeah, it's, uh, uh, Joe's a special place for all of us. Yeah. So it, it meant a lot for yeah. sure. Yeah. So you guys, a lot of good holidays in Northwest. And a picture, great. picture from dad at St. Joe right there. Uh, uh, yeah, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. So anyways, oh, yeah. you can see this here. Yeah. Go ahead, Scott. Grandpa Jess, so dad's grandpa here. Grandpa Foot, dad's dad. He was the president. Grandpa he Foot. started the Kansas Corn Growers. Yeah, and so that picture was on the front of the Kansas Farmer. I kind of wish it didn't have this because that would be a cool picture, but it's all right. It's still great. And then this is dad uh, sitting there one time uh, uh, buying cattle at St. Joe Stockyards. He had a phone right next to him there at the yeah. by his seat at the sale barn. And and uh, that was a picture of him uh, yeah. at the sale. I love that picture. It's actually kind of cool. In Greg's office there in Bucyrus, he got the three or four seats that dad always sat in, the old wooden bleachers right there at St. Joe. Yeah, that's cool. 
jumped up there. It's kind of a cool little, yeah. uh, little memorial. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that's an awesome picture. Memorial stockyards. Yeah. For sure. Are you guys uh, doing any cow-calf or at all? Are you guys raising any? No. No, no different lines or anything? Just stocker cattle yeah. that we'll send on to the feed yard, but no cow-calf. Yeah. yeah. What are you guys mostly feeding? What kind? Oh, just yearling cattle. We yeah. try to stick with, you know, uh, you know, we try to stick to mainly English type yearling cattle. Yeah, you know, there, there's some seasonality to it where you might get some cattle a little, a little more ear than you typically would like. But uh, for the most part, we like just, you know, front end cattle that will grade, yeah. uh, yield and uh, gain. Yeah. Who's, who's in the, who's in line for the next generation has anyone come on board yet is, is andrew on the team or oh yeah no he's still in college so i i you know i have five kids brad has three greg has three mine are older than theirs generally um although i go down to young as well too i guess but uh yeah, I have two of two in college andrew and molly and in high school brad is a sophomore boy in high school i have a freshman boy uh brad is a freshman girl and then uh greg's got a couple in grades greg's got greg has three boys all in grade school and brad and i each have a daughter uh in second grade okay second and first i you guess now. yeah so and then greg's got a first grader also yeah so anyway, that's the they crew. So lot. that's ways to go. We got to keep working for a while. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hell, you might have a whole banking conglomerate by then. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'd find something for everybody to do. So yeah, we'll see. I, I would suspect a lot of the kids want to want to come work. We'll just see how it shakes out, right? But I hope they do. It's it's yeah. fun. That's it's for fun. our biggest job, trying to get these kids raised. That's a deal. It is. It's a job. And, and as you guys know, in our culture, uh, it's uh, it's important what they hear, what they see. And it's hard to control that with uh, everybody's phones. But, um, you know, you raise them right, I think they're they're going to be just fine. We have a, It's easy to talk about all the bad things in our country, but I always like to point out the good things. I think we have a fantastic, fantastic place to raise kids. Yeah, you know? I agree. I agree. Yeah. The media, yeah. unfortunately, likes to... Uh... Well, negative, right? And, and oh, like, they do. They do. It's, I, we even literally had the news on last night. Don't even hardly watch it anymore. And it's all just negative stuff. Finally, you just have to turn it off and uh, focus on the good in your in your family, in your town, and your, you know, in, in your yeah. business. And that's, yeah, I think we're good. Jordan's getting ready um, to get married. Jordan's getting ready to get married here in November. So he's going to have a November wedding like you guys. And, oh, I love it. You know, I love he, it. He's, he's already getting girl, right? Yeah, yeah, still will. Oh, well. He's already getting to calls, you know, where are you at? Why aren't you home? You know, he owns his own business, <laughs> you know, just working yeah. all the time. I yeah. said, well, you better tell her to get used to it and nestle in. Here we go. So tell us about your axe swag a little bit, Jordan, just real quick, maybe. That, that'll yeah, be a I mean, good advertisement for you anyway. Yeah, but um, yeah, axe swag's been great. Kind of just started it uh with my dad. Um we got we always just had a pain ordering stuff online for his business and other sure. businesses we own and hell would show up and it would suck and you'd sit on hold for four days and finally someone from India or China would answer and you'd just throw in the towel and say, Great, you guys win. <laughs> We're over. And then the local people are kind of stuck in their ways. It's like, no, no, this is I'm, I'm like, no, I want this. And they're like, Well, you're getting this. And so we kind of yeah. went out. I started making stuff for my dad and more and more people started asking about it and came up with the name Ag Swag. We're like, hell, let's just uh let's just cater let's to people in agriculture. Like we know agriculture. We like working with people in agriculture and um we kind of know what people want and what they like. So started there, started doing some stuff for some farms and now we're doing stuff with like Cargill, DFA, Nutrien, Golden Harvest. We just uh had a booth at Farm Progress, big booth up there. That went really well. Talked to a lot of big companies. The uh, main marketing person at DeKalb came in our booth and was like, man, like what you guys are doing. Want to start working together. So it's been great. There you go. Yeah, cult culture. I'd say culture is probably the biggest thing and getting good people is probably our, I would say our biggest, uh, biggest obstacle at this point, just finding good, reliable help. Yeah. 
Yeah. Scott, yep. you guys, you guys will know. Do you remember pay less lumber yards? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So my buddy, well, I'd invested quite a bit in pay less and, and bought the sum bitch all the way down when, well, you know, it dropped, yeah. dropped, dropped. Okay, yeah. Got smoked. I mean, <laughs> lost my ass in it. And my wife and I moved to this house and we thought, man, it's going to be great and all. And then one of my neighbors ends up being, she has him over for dinner, whatever. He ends up being the CEO of Payless. And I call her to the side and I'm like, I want to kick the shit out of this guy. And I'm like, you get, you had him over here for dinner. I'm like, I just, you know, I've lost my ass. The guy, yeah. ends, up, the guy ends up becoming a great friend, go to all Jordan's little league baseball games. And well, he, he ended up after Payless, he went and became like a number two at home Depot. He worked with Nardelli and yeah. they'd been to Jack Welch and all that. Well, then he came back and, uh, he had a business consulting thing and he gets hired on by this company called American Identity. And I'm like, what the hell is a big shot CEO like you doing at this American Identity? I said, don't they make like tchotchke thing, like, you know, hats and shirts or some shit like, that? you know, and yeah. like, yeah, well, this private equity group's going to try and dress this thing up. And they're bringing in a few of these hot shot, uh, you know, executives and everything. And they're giving me a big package on an exit. They sold that thing like three years later to Staples for eight billion dollars. Oh in 2000, 2007, eight, and I said, what the hell? How's that possible? And I said, who are your biggest client? I mean, what, how are you guys doing that kind of revenue? He's like, well, shit, man, those farm people love, he's like, my biggest clients are John Deere, ADM and Cargill. And he's like, yeah. they love hats, free hats, free pin, you know, and I, yeah. Yeah. if you ever have a chance, you need to get in that space. And I'm like, I just thought, wow, that is crazy to me that that time. And I said, man, those people are all my good friends. They ADMs and buggies yeah. and cargos. So I told Jordan when he started getting closer to getting out of college, I said, man, my buddy always had the idea, told us maybe we should get into that. You know, and I thought, well, hell, this might be something for Jordan to cut his teeth on and do there you something go. Learn business. So yeah, it's kind of just taken off. So it's, it's been pretty cool to watch it happen, but you'd never suspect, you know, you just never know. We went to a, I went to look at Jordan wanted to buy a bunch of guns the other day. These people were having this private gun sale and it's over in Lock Lloyd, you know, real fancy houses in the yeah, big sure. here in Kansas and I went in, I'm like, damn, man, this house is huge. Whatever. And I said, how the hell did you guys make all your money? Just asking. And they said, oh, we print all the menus for all the IHOPs and the uh, like Denny's around the country. And I said, what? And they're like, yeah, we print all the menus. And I'm like, holy shit. I'm like, <laughs> you never know. You just never know how people are going to make their money, I guess, you know? So pretty wild. We, we, we might just exit cattle feeding and just come work with Jordan. <laughs> yeah. Sell some hats. That's what I told Jordan. <laughs> Oh, too funny. I mean, it's so, fun no, I, too. Like, I mean, yeah. getting to do cool hats and cool shirts and stuff like that. It's, I think it's a lot better than like selling insurance or something like that. So, yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it's but, good. Uh, it's no, one, one last question I had for you guys. Tell me about these uh, mottos you guys have. Stay bullish and get it. I saw, I saw those. I saw those somewhere. Yeah, there you go. There you <laughs> go. Well, you know, uh, get it is completely that's dad you know uh, dad was he he would say that he'd say get it you know because he was just a go-getter i mean he just said get it and, uh before you get off the phone he wouldn't say goodbye he'd say get it i like and, it. Uh, uh, <laughs> and uh we've just always said get it that's that's the family motto get it that's awesome and stay bullish, you know, you, uh, just try to be optimistic. There's ways that you can get down in this industry if you let it. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, you, I mean, you know how fast this thing can turn. Yeah. Uh, so you, you've got to stay optimistic and, and in our mind bullish. So yeah. just important to be. Yeah. We, we, we've always been pretty. Uh, Cup yeah. half full. Cup half full. Exactly. Cup half full. So some people you'll talk to, they'll talk talk the cattle market down. They'll talk how bad it's going to get and all this. Handle that. Okay, you know, like, you, you, you got to think it's better. Otherwise, go hit the retirement home. I mean, you know, it, this is America. We aren't living in, you know, one of these third world countries. We're in the best place in the in the world. And so it's going to get better. I, I think uh, you just have to have that attitude. I agree. Jordan, it's so much I always... more fun. It's so much more fun. Jordan, you go I to the shops and the farmers want to talk stuff down, want to talk about how bad it is. Don't go there. You know, you're in the wrong place. Stay with the positive people. In in our investment world, it's always uh, there's an old saying, young bulls and old bears, right? 
Yeah. 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 You know, when you're young and you went on to the floor, you did, all, you know, you were just fired up. There was nothing because, and you think about you guys, you came out in 97, 98. I mean, we hit the dot com bubble. I mean, we were going, you know, a lot of, if we would have been 50 back then, 60, oh, we'd, yeah. sure. we'd have been like, oh, the, the world's coming to an end. Shit's going to be back. You can just, <laughs> the older we get, the older we get, we get a little more bearish. And it's like, I have to fight it all the time. That's why I like to surround myself, keep the kids. You know, because Jordan sees no problems, no obstacles, just full. Yeah. Well, what about this, son? What about this, son? What? Yeah. Like, Damn, Dad. And I said, eh, a lot of battle scars and wounds. I'm just trying to. <laughs> <laughs> but it is so true. As our, as my trading friends have gotten older and older, they've gotten so much more bearish. I mean, it's just funny to see it evolve. Yeah. But I'll tell you, over the long term, the bullish guys are right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. right. And the, it's guys buy, the guys buying the land are right. The guys, uh, you know, growing their business. Uh, yeah. yeah. Having kids. We're going to have to get married. All right. I mean, that's, that's, exactly. that's, 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 that's believing on America right there. You you go have you as much kids. Have any better investment of your time than that. I agree with you. Yeah. Good stuff. So. And grandpa will be over to take care of them. Don't worry. Exactly. You know. Oh, yeah. my wife's just <laughs> for sure. So, well, yeah. well you got anything else? Or you guys got any big K State or Chiefs games on the schedule? Yeah, uh, like yeah, we're we full the full all schedule. Of them. Yeah, all of them. All of them. Listen to him, K State. <laughs> and, and my my two kids are in college at Notre Dame. And they're they're ranked pretty good yeah. too this year. So, I mean, well, Kevin Jordan, uh, my wife is a Mizzou grad we play in uh, Columbia here in two weeks. Yeah. Wow. So I'll be hey, right. Both, I'll be yeah. in the lion's den here for too long. So yeah, both my kids went to Arkansas and then, uh, you know, I worked with Stoops brothers and Snyder when he kind of first came out to K state for like three summers in a row. I helped with the D backs and defensive side of the ball. So I knew, I knew them when they were at Iowa. So I'm like, okay. hey, did, you play, play. did you play college football then? I did for just brief period, and then I went and they transferred my scholarship over, and I played golf and finished uh, playing golf on my uh, D1 scholarship. So, All right. nice. Where, what, yeah. what school? Missouri, and then UMKC. So, okay. nice. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. so, yeah, it was good. But, yeah, then when I went uh, out of there and I went back to work for the NFL, that's when the NFL had us travel around to a lot of the college campuses. So, I was at uh, Nebraska during kind of a little bit of their heydays, but I saw the transformation at K State like no other. I, I, I'll never forget because we were trying to recruit into help some recruiting in some other place. And I said, how the hell are you recruiting kids into Manhattan? You know, at that time, you know, there was just, and they were recruiting a lot out of Miami and some of those Florida areas. And oh yeah, I remember Snyder just saying, I go, I go to their moms and just say, look, you ain't got to worry about your kids getting in no trouble up in Manhattan. There ain't no <laughs> to go or nothing to do. And he's like, those moms, you know, like, give me the pen and I'm signing him right now. Yeah. Man. Uh, Classic. Okay, I'm going to bring up this, guys, to hear your comments. Hey, we talk a lot around here about how the, the the similarities of running a football team and how yeah. a football team operates in a business. I mean, if you just really look at how you sure. know you manage a football team and how it operates and, and how a business operates, so many good similarities. It's just fun to talk about. I think it makes it a guy, uh, you know – Guys like us love just talking about that and about how you can play offense, how you got to play defense, your special teams, your coaches, you know, everything. Uh, I think it's fun to relate football and business. I, I just sent Jordan something today. I said, hey, I saw this in my files from two years ago. And that's how Jordan and I talk about business all the time. I said, you know, you're looking for an offensive coordinator and you, you haven't filled that role yet. And, you, and we're defense. We're doing good on our logistics and transport, you know, things that are going to yeah. save you money and, keep your mind. I said, we need to get a little more heavy into some offense here and start putting the yep. pedal back on, on and yeah. And have them position, you know, having your players in the right position is super critically important. I mean, how many times you got guys out of position on your staff at, at work all the time I do, you know, just, oh, I know. And if you looked at it from a football perspective, you'd be like, Hey, I got this 300 pound guy out here trying to play wide receiver. I mean, it just ain't going to sure. work. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's like, you got to get so, this figured out. So no, I, I'm with you. Jordan, I use that analogies all the time. So. Oh yeah. Well, football is a fantastic sport. That's our full entertainment package. It feels like it's football. So we, we, 
our falls are very busy. Well, <laughs> best time of the year. Not even yeah, close. Yeah, that's great. Who do you, we you guys started harvest you guys today? Out. Speaking of fall, and we, we, we uh, just started high moisture corn harvest today at our feed yard. So getting in some corn, uh, some wet corn, and and putting up yeah. silage. If you could look right out that window there, uh, you got got a silage pile going up and uh, starting to starting to grind some corn. So Perfect. fall is here. Yeah, I hear you. That'd be great. You guys hunt? I really don't. We're, 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 hey, hunting's fantastic. Just seems like dad always kept us busy and never took us hunting. So the kid, our kids like to hunt and we have a lot of friends who love to hunt, but we, we just never really seem to get it done. Seems like our Saturdays in the fall, we go to football instead of shooting pheasants, but yeah. hunting's, fan, hunting's fantastic. And, and, uh, heck, we, we named the bank Outdoor Bank. So we're, we're all for the outdoors and all that. Yeah. Yep. Cool. So, well, if you guys get down this way, ever let me know if you need anything, or you know, I got a few condos downtown. If you guys go to any concerts or anything, anywhere to stay, so give me a shout. Oh, oh yeah, that'd be good. Go, and make sure and run over to Greg's office and meet him. He couldn't jump on, but I mean, it's just two hundred twenty third and sixty nine highway, right there. Yeah, uh, sure. half mile west, right yeah. over there. My Next wife thing. and I just yeah, we looked at a farm about a two hundred fourth and Annie. It was a farm and a house, you know, some acres in the house, but we didn't end up getting it. Yeah. Yeah, that price, the prices over there have gone nuts lately, man. They've gone just shot crazy, after, you know. Yeah, 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 no doubt. It's yeah. uh, everybody wants out of town, everybody wants outdoors, right? So, uh, you got it. it's a little space, yeah, yeah, perfect. So, well, we appreciate it. Jordan, you got anything else? No, anything you guys wanted to share? We cover it all, or I think we're good. We just want to appreciate the visit with you guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. appreciate what you guys do, yeah. appreciate us telling our story about our family, yeah. Heck yeah, appreciate, appreciate it. The, uh, we'll try to come over to your guys' uh, meeting uh, uh, there you have downtown. What, what yeah, farm town. You, I think you guys really like that. You know, it's a, it's just a lot of uh, like-minded business owners, guys that invest in a lot of different things, and a lot of guys that have banks and farms. And yeah, the, it's the, always in January. Is that when you have it? It is. Yeah, okay. is that a tough one for you guys. You guys usually. Oh, that's well, good. January work. is great. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Yeah, so. We did it well, like that. Just, or, yeah, maybe we'll see. I had it. some buddies from Imperial. I know that came down there and said it's awesome. Oh Great. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just our family. We family run it, and no corporate vibes to it or anything. And just yeah, a lot of good times. Where's it at? Lowe's Center? Or where do you have it? At? We do it Lowe's. You know what? Shit, it just started. Uh, my buddies and I used to get together to just drink some beers and shoot shit. That we were all traders and investors, and we told each other our favorite trades and investments for going into the new year, and then. Right. Uh, you know, everybody just kind of started inviting their friends and their friends, and it ended up being just mostly a lot of guys with a lot of ag investments. And we, like I said, we're investing in all kinds of different stuff, similar to you guys. We never know where the hell we're going next, but um, you know, I hear a lot of good ideas and a lot of good thoughts. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Good time. That sounds great. Yeah. So yeah, maybe. We'll we'll see see you guys. Hey, look forward to it. I gotta get rid of it. All right, yeah. talk to you guys. All Thanks. Right. Nice Bye, boys. You. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate it.